All right, moment of truth. It's missing that. Yes, that. But it'll start. Engage. <laughs> Welcome to Hoobie's Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube, and I am very annoyed with my Aston Martin. This car isn't the theme of today's video, but I chose to drive it up to the Car Wizard, where I plan on filming the start of my 1951 Ford transformation and checking on some other broken hoopties, but this has decided to break in a very, very annoying way. The hood, it's saying it's open all the time, but it's not open. It's not popped, I've checked it a bunch of times. I don't know what it is, probably some British electronic thing, so we'll have the wizard look at that, we'll check on the other broken hoopties, and then we'll dive into the Ford. Hello, wizard. The beautiful Aston Rapide. You like my Rapide? Yes, Well, very, very cool car. It annoys me. Well, why is that? It's very annoying right now because it thinks the hood is popped, and it is definitely not popped. Is it binging and bonging at bong, you? Bong, bong, non-stop, non-stop. So there must be some little sensor here that is not happy. It's not on this. No, it would be down here on the latch. Oh. There it is. See the yeah. black, black and orange wire there? Oh, there are some wires. Yes. So it's in the latch mechanism. Yep. We could probably buy another latch or I could bypass it for you. I could just touch the wires together and you'll never hear that noise again. Hmm. Well, I guess it depends on how much a latch is. Probably with an Aston Martin, it'll be a lot, but... Uh, it might be a Ford Taurus latch, you don't know. <laughs> yeah, true. It's annoying to drive, though. I guess for temporary, we can Until put it we together. Can get, yeah, we can definitely do that to make the noise go away. Nice. Okay, well, we have some updates on some other hoopties. When my Mustang got fixed, uh, new rear ends in it, I brought up the Camaro because the AC leaked out. My 1993 Z28 Camaro. It's been doing great otherwise. Well, yes, we can hook up the, the R2-D2. Angry R2-D2. <laughs> okay. This is error. System empty. And it's beeping at you. So R2-D2 is really mad because there's nothing to recover. It is completely leaked out to zero nothing. Zero. <laughs> oh, no. So, so that's a big leak that we need to find, huh? Definitely. Huh. Could be one of the service ports. That's very common on General Motors vehicles. The service ports just slowly leak out. It's been a couple of months since he sorted this thing out, and it sat for 10 years, so there's going to be something. If that's yeah. all there is, the AC leaking out, then uh, we did really well, Yeah, for sure. But give, give it another once-over, for sure. Definitely. See the Prowler. What's going on with the Prowler? It's almost done. Ah, the Prowler. We did a timing belt, water pump. We addressed some of the oil leaks. We got your window removed, the window regulator, and sent off to be rebuilt. It's so way cheaper than buying a new one. Yes, it's about two hundred dollars instead of a thousand dollars. And actually, somebody sent me a link on uh, the, like a Chrysler Overstock site. They found one for three hundred dollars, which is oh, wow. pretty reasonable. But rebuilding's obviously cheaper than that, so yep. we're still good. Mm -hmm. I also found a site that has hot rod stuff for Prowlers, and uh, oh no, hot rod I, stuff! I, I may have gone a little overboard on the uh, <laughs> parts order there. Oh boy! So there's gonna be some more stuff coming. We'll make it faster. So you got all the fluids changed too? Yes, all the fluids are changed. Lovely. Well, we're not hot rodding this one today. We're going to hot rod the 51 Ford, but oh, yeah. uh, good news here. Bad news, I guess, on the Bentley, or bad-ish, right? Bad-ish. Process yeah. of elimination continues here. 1991 Bentley Turbo R. So you press a little belt in the distributor, and it's still misfiring. We've had this misfire on this thing ever since I bought it. I trade my E63 wagon for it. It gets here, and it's leaking from all over the place, mineral oil, and then this misfire, which now six months later, we still, it's been slow. I haven't made it a priority for you to fix, but it's, right. it's been kind of frustrating. We've done so much, and mm -hmm. you can't really plug in a computer for it to tell you what's wrong, why it's stumbling and misfiring a little bit, uh, but we pretty much eliminated all the ignition, right? Right, the ignition's completely replaced. This was the little belt that was inside the distributor. It was about to break. It had two threads left. Mm. We got that replaced. And it still does it. Yeah, what are you doing here? These are your fuel injectors are soaking in cleaner. Look at the gunk coming off of them. Okay, so... This can create a part throttle misfire when they're not... The injectors aren't popping properly. I see. All right, well, this is a probably a cheaper fix, too. We're doing all the easy stuff before we yeah. 
yeah. really start digging into the hard stuff. A lot of the equipment they used to have in dealerships for this Bosch Jetronic stuff, nobody has that stuff anymore to test equipment. So. Well, how about the Lambo? The Lambo. 2006 Lamborghini Murcielago Roadster yep. is We've got more together. All new coils, all new plugs. Everything from this point forward is done. All I have left is accessories, the belt, and some cable, some wiring to hook up. It's been months. I'm really worried because that transmission was used out of a wrecked car, so we don't know. Hopefully, I mean, there's no way you're getting a new one. It's like a $30,000 rebuild, so <laughs> yeah. uh, you're trusting a lot for someone selling you a good part. And there's a lot that came apart, a lot to go back together, so. And it was a lot, uh, yes. Nervous, but uh, while this is pretty complicated, what I'm going to take apart today, hopefully all by myself, is is very simple, and that's that's the, the Ford Flathead. So this is the back end of my 1951 Ford Country Squire. It was beautifully restored, I say restored, probably refreshed 30 years ago. It sat for decades and uh, a lot of its original, original engine, it was rebuilt with the original wirings in there, which you need to clean up. The wheels were trashed, we've replaced the wheels so this thing can now roll with some fresh rubber. Just look how beautiful this thing is. It's just gorgeous. Well behold, Henry Ford's Genius, the Flathead V8, which was unveiled to the world in 1932 and finally retired in 1953. And this was such a game changer for the industry because it put V8 power in the hands of yes. the masses. Yes, Bonnie and Clyde was a big fan. Well, a lot of people are big fans because it had power and power back in 1932 was 60 horsepower, not very much. By this year, 1951 has a different configuration, has a little over 100 horsepower. Still. Not very much by modern standards, but that was a lot in the 1930s, 40s, 50s. Outrun the cop car is really yeah. easy. So not only is a flathead the engine that put the V8 in the hands of the masses, it's what birthed the whole revolution of car modding, of hot rodding, starting with this engine. A lot of companies that we know today, which some of the parts I bought over there, got their start because of this flathead V8. So currently this engine was rebuilt at some point and it was repainted. It runs very, very well, but I'm not a big fan of the paint job wizard. Yeah, it's the sparkle is what I don't like. This is definitely, I think it's the factory color. It's supposed to be brown, but they decided to add so much metallic to it that it just looks kind of out of place. It looks really dated, but in a bad way. Yeah, true, and also dated or the wiring here, you can see it's just all falling apart. You have the old sick bolt in there. Yeah. And I was kind of reluctant to touch this thing because it is so original. And it also runs really well as is. So mm -hmm. it is a little scary to touch it and change things, but don't worry, I'm not changing the engine. And I'm not gonna do anything that someone wouldn't have done back in the 50s when they were hot rodding flatheads. Well, other than the 12 volt conversion, which I'll get to over there in a little bit. But in the meantime, Wizard, what do I need to uh, get one of these heads off? You need to start with the coolant, get that drained out, and you get this water neck off, spark plugs out, get this oil filter canister out of the way, and zip away on some bolts. It looks very simple. It is very simple. So I'm actually going to wrench on this thing like a hot rodder back in the day, or Tony Stark in the first Iron Man movie was working on his flathead Ford in the, the first uh, yep. picture. Uh, but let's look at the parts here. Now, part of the Flathead's charm is its simplicity. It is the embodiment of the KISS method, keep it simple, stupid, right down to the design of the heads. It's called the Flathead because there's nothing in the head. It's basically like a valve cover, except it also serves as part of the combustion chamber, but there's really nothing to it. And that's why swapping out the heads is actually very, very simple. Now, you see the name on here, Edelbrock. It's a pretty synonymous name with hot rodding custom builds today but he got his start back in the 1930s because of this flathead V8. He started making cylinder heads and dual carb intakes for the flathead V8, and that's what made him famous, and that's what built this company. So, when I saw these heads, which are still being made, I knew I had to buy them for my car. They're made out of aluminum, so it makes the engine lighter. It helps with the cooling, with the fins, and as you can see, there's the top of the combustion chamber. You can see the valves are actually in the engine. When I take the head off, you'll see really how it looks. And the valves open and close here, the intake and exhaust valves. And then you have this kind of cone shape for the combustion chamber. And apparently the shape of this is different than the standard flathead V8, which gives it a little more 
performance. It helps get more air and fuel in and out of the engine. And it is a very pretty and lightweight. Another name you may have heard of is Offenhauser. It sounds German, it may be, I don't know. I didn't really research it all that much. But here we have a dual carbureted intake. Currently there is one carburetor on the engine. This bolts to the flathead and gives you the ability to get more air, more fuel into the combustion chamber using a dual carburetor setup. Might as well get it out and see how pretty it is. And oh man, is it pretty. So not only will we help performance of the flathead a little bit, but we'll definitely dress things up. This is, this is really, really sharp. So those are the two beauty items. I have two new carburetors and boxes over here. There's two of these. Look pretty standard and a lot of other small little bits and pieces. But one of the big ticket items was the 12 volt conversion. And so I have a little bit of a history with uh, cars burning to the ground. So all the old ancient wiring needs to come out. And this is a new under dash wiring harness replacement. Also gonna do the 12 volt conversion just to make things easier. It looks totally stock. It looks like a little six volt generator. Back in the day, they used a totally different voltage. I, I don't know why. I'm not sure about all that electrical stuff, but uh, 12 volts better. It's what we still use today. So I can put like a modern radio in it, and that kind of stuff. So oh, let's get started with tearing that head off. So I believe after less than 10 minutes of work, I have everything off you absolutely need to take off to take the head off this engine. That's how simple it is. And I'm not taking a lot of other things off because I want to see if we can do the flathead's party trick. This is a really cool party trick with these, but in the meantime, I have 24 bolts to remove. There are a lot, a lot of bolts, a lot, a lot. I got a flat hat off faster than you can get uh, two wires crossed on an Aston Martin. How is that possible? <laughs> it's so easy. It's ridiculously easy. Well, there's a lot of bolts on this thing too. <laughs> there might be more bolts to get that off than to actually get off the head on a flathead Ford. That's crazy. <laughs> That's hilarious. Are you looking for a job? <laughs> no, I'm the most incompetent mechanic in the world, but still <laughs> I was able to, to manage this. So I'm going to compare this to the new head, see if it looks any, any different be interesting to see if it is well at first glance one is way more pretty than the other from the outside but there's there's a bit more going on on the inside here so on the stock combustion chamber you can see it's a lot it's a lot deeper wizard right mm -hmm. so this is a pretty deep groove right here compared to this one it doesn't go nearly as deep right there's more cc's in this chamber here than there is it's going to up your compression ratio a little I see. And then there's also the dome, I think. There's a lot more dome on this one as far as it's curving back up, is it? I think so. Am I seeing something? Yeah, it would be kind of like this. Yes, it's curving back up as opposed to this one just kind of falls down. Yes, in. this chamber here is very large. This one doesn't even have that chamber. It's solid right here. So that's kind of why the flathead Ford was retired. They kind of reached the limit of what they could do with the valve still in the block of the engine because it's kind of hard to get flow going. You have intake going into the combustion chamber and then it has to go sideways back out as opposed to an overhead valve mm -hmm. where it just drops it right in. It's a lot more efficient. This is basically like a, a lawnmower engine as yeah. far as the way the valves are arranged. So that'll look beautiful when it's back in the car with the dual carburetor set up and uh, give me a little bit more power but I've left everything on there so we can do the flathead party trick. Oh boy. This thing should run with the cylinder head off on four cylinders. So you can actually see one side, the pistons and the valves moving with, with, with no head on it. it. It runs on four cylinders. That's how simple, low compression, tough these engines are. It's gonna be so. interesting to see. Okay, battery is back in and hooked up. All the wiring is out of the way. Hopefully it doesn't ignite anything. Just in case, we have a fire extinguisher. Yes. I'm gonna do the honors. We have camera on the ready. All right. Engage. <laughs> Engage. <laughs> 
that. What? <laughs> the flat head party trick. This thing's so low compression, so simple, that it'll run on half its cylinders. Well, it's, it's starting to die. Oh no. Well, it did finally keel over on its own. I'm not sure why, but I guess it is missing like half its heart. So yeah. huh. I'm not gonna push my luck and try and start it again. We saw it. It does run with one of the cylinder heads off, which is just absolutely insane. Huh. Isn't that awesome? That's, it's awesome, it's crazy. I've never seen in my life an engine work, you know, how it all works and moves in real time. It's very fast. For, for real, it is very fast. I slow it down with the GoPro. I love this engine. I love this car. The wood, everything. I didn't say woody one time this entire video. Oh, well now you did. Yes. So we'll continue with this car. We're going to do a lot of hot rodding and some modernizing and just to make it a safe, nice driver. And then I'm going to enjoy this car. That's so cool. It is a cool car. Thank you for watching.